Good morning. <laughs> Welcome one and all to the worship of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. I am Reverend Joellen Tuttle, and I am pleased to be your worship leader this morning while Pastor Becky is on her way back from General Conference. Our worship leadership, for whom we are always grateful, includes our ushers and hospitality ministers, um, Gary Rich, our, cam Rith, our camera operator, um, in for our technical director, David Kingsley, is Luke Klingensmith this morning with us. Um, we give thanks for Maya Finkel, our song leader and choir director, and especially for the chancel choir who's bringing special music this morning. For Molly McMillan, our pianist, for Dee Levine, our administrative assistant and communications coordinator, and Jamie Breedlove Crouch, who is also recovering from General Conference, um, who is our Loving Care Ministries coordinator. Uh, we are grateful for the support of all of our staff uh, who are listed in your bulletin. So I extend a welcome to those who are visiting with us today, as well as those who worship with us regularly, both here and online. If you are visiting on site today, please find a connect card and complete it, if you will. Uh, that way we may thank you for your presence with us this morning. And I ask those that are worshiping with us online to please be so kind as to record your participation by either leaving a comment if you are viewing via Facebook Live or by completing the virtual friendship pad on the worship page on the website if you are viewing live streaming. Uh, just a reminder also, um, in support of our ministries, there are a couple of options. One is to, if you are online, just hit the donate button and follow the prompts. Another is to just mail your check here to 402 uh, North Aurora Street. Or if you are in worship this morning on site, our ushers will be glad to wait upon you and receive your gifts. The additional candle on the altar, the red one in the lantern, reminds us to pray for peace. We want to lift, uplift the people of Ukraine, Russia, Gaza, Israel, and all their surrounding countries in our prayers daily. May we also pray for the people of Armenia as they are engaged in conflict. So I ask you to uplift these folks in all of these lands in your prayers as well that the growing cycle of human violence may end. And we'll say more about that today. We are so grateful for families with young children attending worship. There are some children's books and toys on the black cart back near the sanctuary door for your use. And following the message for all God's children, children ages 4 to 11 may go to Curious with Christ and will return in time to participate in Holy Communion with their families. So on this sixth Sunday of Easter, we revisit Jesus' words from the Last Supper and hear how the early church was called to remember Jesus' new commandment to love one another. So let us begin our worship by expressing our Christian love for one another, by sharing signs of love, whether that's from heart, uh, your hands, share the love and peace of Christ with all, please. Hi, Molly. And if you would turn to face Gary with the camera there, uh, to all of our uh, uh, participants online, we want to greet them with saying, God is love. God is love. Thank you. Please be seated as Molly provides our centering music this morning so we may focus ourselves on worshiping our Lord God.
Please, if you are able, would you stand and join in our call to worship this morning? When we feel hopeless, we know God is with us. When we feel alone, we know God is near us. And you're looking at me like I have missed something. What's in your bulletin? I'm on the text group. Hmm? I'm confused. Sing the Lord a new song. Oh, that's what I get for not having a bulletin and just going by the text script. Thank you, Jackson. Jackson has saved me. Let us start this again. Yes. One more time with feeling. Our call to worship is adapted from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and people with equity. Sing praises to the Lord with trumpets. Make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let us praise and worship our creating and redeeming God. And may we then sing together out of our United Methodist hymnal, Lift High the Cross, found on page 159. Thank you, Jackson. We're good. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. And will you open your hearts to God as we pray? O oh, compassionate God, we pray that you will bring into our hearts and minds, into our plans and actions, 
into our hopes and prayers a greater love for all people. We confess we have dwelt in the silence of prejudice, the isolation of ignorance, the false sense of security in earthly fortresses, and the fear that prevents honest communication with one another and with you. Break down these barriers and help us to come home to your love by becoming one family on this planet we all call home. Amen. And I am looking for Bill, George. George will share our scripture lessons with us this morning. Thank you, George. Good morning. I hope there I hope there aren't any big words that are hard to pronounce this morning. So I'm George Gull. I'm filling in for for um, Bill Highland. The scripture reading this morning is from 1 John 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone believes that Jesus is, the, Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Whoever loves someone who is, a, who is a parent loves the child born to the parent. This is how we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep God's commandments, this is the love of God. We keep God's commandments. God's commandments are not difficult because everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has defeated the world, our faith. Who defeats the world? Isn't it the one who believes that Jesus is God's son? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood, and the Spirit in the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. The second reading is from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this. I lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and, hear and bear fruit fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I am scanning the congregation to see if I have children or not this morning. Um, how about some teenagers? Hmm. I see Jackson, and I know I saw one other. Come on up. I don't know you yet. Come forward. Thanks. Come help me out, because I've got things that I'm going to need extra hands for, okay? Uh, your name is? Kirsten. Kirsten. Jackson. I know Jackson. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to sit down. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Have a seat, guys, <laughs> because we've got toys to play with here. So in the reading that Mr. Gull just shared with us was the word abide, talking about God's love abiding in us and we abiding in God. And it gets a little confusing, abiding, you know, 
I'm abiding in you, but you're abiding in me. And then we have the magic word abiding, which we don't use much. Abide, sometimes we'll say, instead of where do you live, we'll say where do you abide, but that's pretty ancient. <laughs> so abide can mean not only where you live, but can mean to remain, it can mean to continue to be present. It can mean to uh, live in and dwell in. We have those. So here's my example today. This is my itty bitty 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 baby Jesus. My itty itty bitty baby Jesus. And this reminds us that God sent Jesus to be God's love to abide with us. And that sense to be a constant present with us, always being with us, right? All right, so Jackson, you need to hold baby Jesus for a moment here. So this is us, <laughs> okay? And we are told that God's love abides in us. So far, so good? All right. And then if you will... Hold us for a moment. Okay. And then, however, we're told that we abide in God's love. Right? So here we go. So we're going to put ourselves. We now abide in God's love. But we're also part of a community. Oops, I did it out of order. <laughs> we're also part of a community. So um, in our congregation, we refer to um, our fellow Christians, we try to use the term to remember to use terms like siblings, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And they also, also uh, surround us in love. So this is where we're at, right? So Jackson, hold us a minute. So God surrounds us with love, but also our community surrounds us with Christ's love. We just did that and sent God's love out over the live stream, right? All right. So, Jackson, you need to hold us there. There's God surrounding us, surrounding God, right? The last one. God's love is shown in the creation of the entire universe. Everything that we have, everything we do is surrounded in God's love. So, here is the great... God of the universe surrounding us with love. And that is how we abide in God. God abides in us. So we have our God's love contained for the universe. So thank you for your help on that. And let's just have a prayer. People may repeat after me if you would. Oh, loving God. Oh, loving God. Thank you for your gift. Of Jesus, of Jesus, who makes your love real to us. Makes your love real to us. Help us to reveal. Help us to reveal your love in us. Your love in us through our deeds. Through our deeds to people who need to know your love. To people who need, need to, to know, know your, your love. love. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for your help. I need extra hands with our little dolls here. You were thinking I wasn't going to make it up, weren't you? Yeah.
So, good morning. <laughs> Let me tell you a true story from my life. Uh, some of you know that I actually served as the Director of Christian Education here at St. Paul's while I attended seminary. And after seminary, I was consecrated as a diaconal minister. There's not many of us left around anymore. Um, Arlene Hewitt is also a retired diaconal minister. But that meant I was still laity and not clergy. So the diaconate was called to a service of love, service, and justice, and had the charge to be a bridge between the church and the world. So several years passed, and I was appointed by the bishop to serve as the youth and church school coordinator for a local church and, and to teach at the Gossett Residential Center which is now known as the Finger Lakes Residential. Um, and some of you may remember Glenna Magars from this congregation. Glenna also taught there as well. So it was and still is a minimum secure facility for male youth offenders age 14 through 18. So one Sunday after church, a woman from the congregation approached me rather angrily and said, how can you teach there? They've broken the law. They're dangerous. Those boys are criminals. And I was slightly taken aback. <laughs> but I thank the Holy Spirit for helping me keep my calm and being able to respond. If not me, a believer in new life in Christ, who believes that through Christ's love, lives can be changed, then who? At which point the woman sort of deflated and breathed out a simple, oh, and walked away. So the writer of the first letter of John that George read for us this morning reminds us that everyone born of God defeats the world. And what better way to defeat the world's evil, to free youth from succumbing to the world's evils, than by loving them. And that is the challenge issued in this letter and indeed in Jesus' new commandment that we are to love one another. A quick little Bible history here. Um, the group of fledgling early second century Christians shared this letter, the first letter of John, among a network known as the Johannan Communities. And they were congregations that knew about Jesus through the Gospel of John. And you may say, so what's that mean? <laughs> well, you need to remember that John's Gospel was written around 90 AD, several years after the Gospels of Mark, Luke, and Matthew. And it's organized differently than the other three Gospels. While the other three basically provide a biographical or chronological account of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. John focuses on the seven signs 
or what we might call miracles, which reveal Jesus as God's son. So it is only in the Gospel of John that we have Jesus turning water into wine. It's the only Gospel where we see Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And it's the only Gospel that includes the words that George read from us this morning, Jesus' words at the Last Supper. Only the Gospel of John records Jesus' new commandment, the mandatum novum, the new mandate. And it's from this phrase, mandatum novum, the new mandate, that we get the term Monday Thursday. So the night in which Jesus is betrayed as he shares his last earthly meal with his disciples, he gives this new commandment to love one another. So among these Johannine communities, there was a great emphasis on acknowledging that we love because God first loved us. And the new commandment to love one another was necessary for the letter writer to emphasize because these new communities were made up of Jewish and non-Jewish people, people from different social strata, some from different countries, they needed to learn to love and trust one another. So it is this wondrous love given to us by God through God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be shared with one another. Now, in our gospel reading, if you were following along, in verse 16, Jesus tells his disciples, I chose you. I appointed you to go. And because of Christ's love, we are chosen to seek reconciliation with the Gaiacono Gai people of the Cuyuga Nation. Excuse me. <coughs> we are chosen and appointed to pray for peace. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Allergies, sorry. <laughs> Again, we are chosen and appointed to pray for peace. We keep the candle lit on in our lantern on the altar table to remind us to pray for peace. But we are chosen for more than that. We are chosen to love one another, to love all of God's children. We are chosen to, in our form as a reconciling ministries church to love persons of all orientations <coughs> and we are to love people around the world especially God's children in Ukraine and Russia Gaza and Israel we are chosen appointed and challenged to love the perpetrators as well as the victims of violence. <clears throat> that unconditional kind of love, that work to love everyone with unconditional love, it's hard work. Loving all the people of the world to defeat evil is hard work. And in this unconditional love that gives us the courage to lay down our life for others, that unconditional love is a courage that we might not even know we have until confronted with evil. I know if you've been following the news out of Syracuse, much has, much has been made about the news about the two police officers, Lieutenant Husak and Officer Jensen, who were killed in the line of duty a few weeks ago in Syracuse. Actually, they kept referring to it as the town of Salina, but the locals would call it Liverpool. And these two men found the courage to confront a person committing a crime out of duty and selfless love. We would point to them as fulfilling Jesus' call to lay down one's life for one's friends. And the media reported on the community's outpouring of love and support for the fa officers' families and prayers for the children left behind including the one that had just participated in their first communion two days before the shooting. And we have to acknowledge that the act, the act of shooting was evil. 
But because I taught at Gossett, I have to tell you, I listen to the news a little differently from other people. I listen for the name of the perpetrator, not the victim, the perpetrator, praying that he is not a former Gossett student of mine. And so, on one 11 o'clock TV news report, um, reporting on this story, I heard it. I heard the name of a young man who was in the house with the shooter, a young man who I had lovingly cared for in youth group that I had led when I was a youth and family minister in a church in North Syracuse. My Christian love for this young man continues, but I am saddened by the world's evil that drew him into that unthinkable situation. And I pray that the faith that had blossomed in this man as a youth is still present and that it is still capable of bearing fruit, fruit that will last. And perhaps it is because of my love and the love of the young man's family and maybe even the love of the former congregation for this young man that he had the courage to surrender himself peacefully to the officers at the scene. God's love for us is wondrous. The challenge for us always is to reflect that love into the world. The love for us that God expresses through the world that God created for us is wondrous. The trees of the field. It is a miracle to see this strong, bold, and resilient love changing the world's malignancies and to restore all of creation through the love we share with the world. The selfless love offered to us by God's own son, Jesus, in order to save the world from sin, calls us to defeat sin and evil with Christ's love. We are called into community and communion with one another through the love of our God, Christ, and Holy Spirit. What wondrous love God has wrought. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is Become to Us a Living Bread, found on page 630 in your hymnal. You may stand if you are willing and able. Please be seated. It is good to remember the gifts that God pours out upon us regularly out of God's love for us. And so it is time now for us to support those ministries in which we are able to reach out to others and let them know God's love. So at this time, here in the 
on-site sanctuary. Um, our ushers will wait upon us to receive your gifts. And Maya and Molly have a special offertory for us this morning. Thank you, Maya and Molly, so much. In the United Methodist tradition, all are welcome to participate in Holy Communion. And in order to facilitate that here at St. Paul's, uh, we will have one station here with myself with bread, which is vegan and gluten-free and a chalice of grape juice, which is no sugar added. And then uh, George will have a um, tray of self-contained units of grape juice and cracker. And beyond that, Pam will have a tray of gluten-free wafers and individual cups of grape juice. Uh, so I hope um, that you understand that this is our way of welcoming everyone to participate in Holy Communion with our Lord. So I would ask you now if you would join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn singing. Singing? <laughs> Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. And so it was on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, this is my body broken for you. Ah, uh, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By his spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Hosanna in the highest. 
highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. And as the beloved children of God, may we join in the Lord's Prayer from the Book of Common Prayer from New Zealand, praying, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. I would ask that those assisting uh, to distribute the elements, please come forward. We'll do this first. I can open it. I did mine. I think we're good. Okay. Gluten free with Pam. <laughs> Which way? The far end? Far end. Individual cups with wafers, George. This is Christ's body, broken for us, the bread of life. This is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of salvation, the forgiveness of sins offered to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord has prepared this table. Come and join the feast. I'm going to swap with you. Sorry. This was in my hands. Jackson, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary Lou, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Linda, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for coming up, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Josephine, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lorraine, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Holly, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wendy, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Kirk, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Suzanne, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. I think you're doing great. <laughs> Barbara, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Tim, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Mary Lou, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Dick, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. In the cup. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. The body of our Lord 
Jesus Christ broken for you. Brian, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Kathy, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Oh, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Good morning. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Patty, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Hi, John, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Elaine, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Dwight, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Hi, Jacob, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Amen. Vito, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Janet, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Tim, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Karen, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Phil, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Jesus Christ broken for you. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us conclude our time of Holy Communion with the prayer found in your bulletin. God, we thank you for the promise of new life, life as unpredictable, as unrehearsed, as marvelous as life at the very beginning. You call us to this table, charging us to respond to this marvelous gift with creativity, with courage, and with joy. We go forth from this time of holy union with you to share with the world your glorious gifts of forgiving love and saving grace. In Christ's name, amen. Our closing hymn this morning is found in the Faith We Sing bullet um, hymnal on page 2279. And again, if you are able and willing, would you please join in standing and the singing of our hymn. You shall go on.
If you would be seated, we have some announcements to be made. First, I'll just highlight um, items on the bulletin. A reminder that the May request from the village of, at Ithaca is for bottles of dish detergent. The box is on the table outside the sanctuary doors there. Um, we hope that you are able to um, contribute to this um, ministry of providing items that are needed for those so in need. Also, you may notice that there is a um, call for a child care provider for our congregation. Uh, please, if you have people that you know might be interested that are um, over 18 at least and uh, are willing to spend time with our um, infant toddler age range, um, uh, please let us know as the Children's Ministries team is anxious to uh, provide uh, that opportunity for families with young children during worship. And a reminder, too, that the Children's Ministries team is meeting today at 2 p.m. in the memorial room. So I'm sure you're all dying to know, <laughs> Pastor Becky was due to arrive home about midnight last night. But she did send a brief message about General Conference to share with you today. So this is what Pastor Becky writes for us. The Holy Spirit moved in powerful ways at the postponed 2020 General Conference. As you may have read or heard on the news, we adopted by an overwhelming majority all three of our goals for the conference. Worldwide re regionalization, adoption of the revised social principles, and removal of the harmful and discriminatory language which has denied acceptance of LGBTQIA persons, um, the ordination of God called and equipped clergy, and the ability of UM clergy to perform same-sex weddings. And yes, as a reconciling congregation, we rejoice at that. However, above and beyond that, the conference adopted procedures for clergy who had left or been forced to leave the denomination to re-enter. They adopted new definitions of marriage, and they adopted protections for those who would have formerly been brought up on charges for being LGBTQIA, or for performing weddings for our queer neighbors. So Pastor Becky will be filling us with, in on more details very soon, but until then, you are welcome to go to the website of the, United, of the Upper New York Conference and read, um, read Bishop Hector's news release. So there's a full text, but there's also a video to watch if you go to the site um, as he um, provides his uh, summary of general conference. That is the good news. <laughs> yeah. 
We know there will be some need for healing in certain situations um, that um, over the years, many harmful or hurtful things have been done on both sides of the issue, and we just ask for Christ's love to guide us all through that process. So now, as you go forth this week, may the love Jesus Christ gave you be found in every heart you meet. And may the love Jesus Christ gave you be filling you for everyone you meet. Go in the love of Christ. Amen. Thank you.